What's up, guys? It's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now, we are on part five of our series of the SSI React Right program. Now, once again, this is a great program for you to take, even if you're a non-diver, because you can use the same tips and techniques to help a patient, say, in the general public, even in a non-diving situation. So this is a great course for you to look into. Now, we do hope this series is helping you prepare, say, for your final exam for the SSI React Right program. But we also want you to seek out your local instructor to go over the tips and techniques that we're talking about in these videos so that you can actually put them into a practical sense and practice them so that you'll be better prepared to render aid when needed. Now, the first part of chapter five that we're going to look at, of course, is bleeding. And once again, like we said in chapter one, you need to determine how severe the bleeding is and what type of bleeding is it? Is it arterial bleeding? Is it, say, venomous bleeding or something of that sort? And of course, you're going to learn how to control that bleeding as well, whether it's direct pressure, elevation, or even applying a tourniquet, say, if you had some type of amputation. Now, the next thing that you're going to look at in Chapter 5, of course, is burns. And there's several different types of burns out there, whether it's a chemical burn or maybe some type of, say, sunburn or anything of that sort. It could simply be a burn from heat, such as maybe somebody got their hand stuck in a fire or something like that. You can actually assess a patient and treat them for any different types of burn. You're also going to learn proper treatment, say, for chemical burns as well. A lot of people would have just automatically assumed to put water on a chemical burn when, in reality, the water itself can have a, a negative reaction and make the burn even worse. Your local SSI React Right instructor is going to go over several different techniques that is going to allow you to help that patient appropriately and to treat that burn as well. Now, the next part of chapter five, we're going to look at joint injuries, whether it's breaks, sprains, or even strains. Your local SSI React Right instructor is going to show you how to treat that patient and how to mobilize an injured limb, whether you're putting on a splint or maybe you're wrapping up some type of ACE bandage around the patient. And they're even going to show you how to mobilize the patient to where you're not restricting their breathing as well. We do want to immobilize and we also want to check vitals both above and below, say, an injured site. And your local SSI React Right instructor is going to teach you those techniques so that you can be more proficient when you're assessing and treating a patient in the field. Now, the next part of chapter five, of course, is going to be head injuries, spinal injuries, and even eye injuries. You're going to learn how to mobilize a patient who does have a spinal injury and how to even move that patient, say if it's in an emergency situation, without causing any further injuries to said patient. Now, typically speaking, if it is going to be a head or spinal injury, you are going to need assistance because say if you apply a C-spine to a patient, you're pretty well done at that point. There's nothing else you can do for the patient other than hold, say, that C-spine. So if that's going to be a option for you, you want to make sure that you have an additional resource there to help aid in that patient's recovery and of course their treatment as well. Now we're going to get into the poison section of chapter five, and there's several different ways a person can become poisoned, whether they inhale poison, they ingest poison, or even it's just from physical contact. We understand as divers, there's certain types of marine life that are venomous and poisonous to it. And simply by touching it, we can actually contract some type of poison. Now your SSI React Right instructor is going to go over different types of poison and how to treat that patient as well. And if you are interested in learning more about, say, venomous creatures or marine life, check out the SSI ecology programs because they're going to go over a slew of different species of fish and other types of marine life that can be dangerous for you when you're underwater diving. Now, of course, the next thing that you're going to discuss in chapter five is hyperthermia and hypothermia. And the easiest way to remember this, think of hyper being too much, such as a kid who gets too much sugar and they're very hyper, and hypo being not enough. So a person who is suffering from, say, hyperthermia, they may be suffering from what's called heat exhaustion or even heat stroke. And of course, somebody who has hypothermia, that's where their core body temperature has dropped below the norm and they're going to suffer from other major in injuries as well. So we want to make sure that we're treating that patient, whether it's active warning or even passive warming, and your SSI React Right instructor is going to show you several different techniques that you can use to treat a patient who is suffering, say, from hyper or even hypothermia. 
Now the next part of chapter five is the more life-threatening scenarios such as say seizures or allergic reactions or a stroke or even a heart attack. Your SSI React Write instructor is gonna go over each one of these scenarios and gives you tips and tricks of how to handle it. Of course, in these situations, we are in the primary care situation. So you may have to say, give them CPR or apply an AED or administer oxygen. But no matter what the scenario is, you need to make sure that you're contacting 911 or your local emergency emergency medical services first before you actually take action. We want to get advanced life support in route as quickly as possible. Now, once you start providing basic life support and advanced life support gets on scene, you need to definitely let them take over or take their commands by whatever they need you to do. So if you're performing CPR, then of course you want to continue if they ask you to do so. Guys, that's going to do it for Chapter 5 of our series of the SSI React Write program. If you got any questions on this video or any of the videos in the series, drop me a comment down below and I'll try to answer it as quickly as I can and as best as I can as well. Stay tuned because we got one more video coming out in this series where we're going to be looking at breathing difficulties and how actually to administer emergency oxygen. Now, this is something that you need to be trained for and this is what's included in the React Write program. So definitely stay tuned for that. But guys, I'm going to go ahead and sign off for today. Take care. God God bless, and I'll see you in the next video.